What's up guys, Ryan here from Mud Gunner, and today we are going to be talking about the Russian AK-47. I feel like people, like when they think AK, they obviously think Russian AK because they were the original manufacturer of it. But I just wanted to talk today about are they still relevant for today's standards in AKs? Because AKs have come a long way, honestly in the last 5 years, the last 10 years, but uh, yeah, prior to that your options weren't as great. But nowadays, you have quite a few options. So I just wanted to talk about that today because the Russian AKs have gotten a lot harder to get. They've gotten a lot more expensive. And I just kind of want to give my thoughts if you're looking for a quality AK. Do you need to buy a Russian? Or are there other ones that are pretty good for the money? So let's get into it. So I want to start off by saying I'm not the biggest AK shooter. Like, I own a bunch. I actually, I'm trying to collect AKs from around the world. So I have about 15 AKs right now. Um, there are a variety of different brands. But I have this goal to collect them from every country we can get them from. So there's still a few I'm missing. But... One thing that I feel like I did right is I bought a lot of my European AKs at the time when they were pretty readily available. Um, they weren't expensive at all. I mean, money's still money, but I got Russian AKs for under 600 bucks a piece. So I bought them at the right time, and um, I just kind of wanted to give my thoughts of like what their current prices are because right now, if you were to look up a Russian AK, like a full like ready to go AK, they're like 2,000 to 3,000 or even 4,000 dollars. There are a few exceptions that are less than that. Um, I would say the more expensive of the two is probably the Sega for a converted AK for whatever reason. So this one is an Easemash Sega. I think it was mine was imported by like Legion Arms or something. Yeah, Legion Trade. So um, there was a variety of importers. I even think like Arsenal imported them. Um, but yeah, you when we're talking Russian AKs, the main ones we're talking is the Sega and the Vepr. The Vepr is a little bit beefier, and it honestly kind of gives more of a like Zastava vibe, like the Yugoslavian ones or now the Serbian ones, because they're uh, they got beefier trunnions, uh, thicker barrels. The Sega is the more traditional AK style, and um, at the time, and I bought both of these like over six years ago. At the time, they were very similar in pricing. I think, I think for this one I paid about five, and for that one I paid about six, and, and I know that's very cheap, but again at the time they were they were like maybe eight to a thousand brand new um we didn't carry them new too much but we would get a lot of them transferred into the store that i work at but yeah they were not considered expensive guns the sporters were pretty cheap and i would say that's what you can get pretty cheap right now cheap for a russian ak so you can get the sporterized version which it's an ak but it looks more kind of like a neutered ak like an sks you don't have your pistol grip um, you have like a sporting style stock, like think just hunting style stock on there, no grip. Um, the trigger is further back and then you have kind of like a, just a solid handguard that kind of goes further out. A lot of times you don't have, some of them have front sights, most of them are not threaded. So you can buy a sporter one, which I guess sporter eyes has different meanings depending on the gun we're talking about, but a sporter AK that kind of looks like the mini 14 of AKs. That's the easiest way to uh, describe it, but look up sporter AK if you're not familiar with that. So I was checking on GunBroker before I made this video. You can still get a Sporter um, Vepr. Those are anywhere from like 1,000 to 15. And you can get these Sporter Segas for about 1,000. And I mean, I would say that's considered a lot, but you got to think about the current times that we're in. Um, it's just kind of up to you. If you really want a Russian AK, to buy a Russian AK like either one of these, you're going to spend at least 2,500 bucks right now to 3,000 plus dollars. It's kind of crazy to me. Um, I knew they were going to go up in price. I never thought they would be like a $2,000 plus dollar AK, which if you're looking at them now, you're like, oh yeah, every Russian AK is over two grand. But I never thought about that when I bought them. So I knew I wanted a Russian AK because, you know, again, it's iconic, but I did not think that they would ever be a $2,000 plus dollar gun. But it's just kind of crazy. And one thing that I talk to people about is if you want a gun that's made from another country that we have access to pretty often, um, you should buy it when you can. Because there's a couple things that I missed out on. The Romanian RPK was always one. We used to sell them used for $800 all the time. And I was like, yeah, I want an RPK at some point. And I just, I never jumped on it. And then if you are familiar with what's kind of gone on with the AK market, those Romanian RPKs started going for like $2,000 plus. But the quality wise on that is not a $2,000 plus gun, in my opinion. Um, the Century Arms Romanian AKs, I mean, they're cool. And I have a Wasser 10 right now, an old one. I don't shoot it very often because if I do shoot an AK, I shoot my nicer stuff. But um, yeah, I would never ever consider a Sentry Arms Romanian RP, even RPK to be a $2,000 gun. But I mean, that's kind of the reality of it is I missed the bandwagon on that, but I bought other stuff at the right time. So again, if you want a gun that is an imported gun, meaning that another country makes it, we bring them into this country. I mean, there's times where a lot of stuff is readily available. If you have the means to get it and you know you're going to want it, I would recommend getting it because 
Um, there's things like these I bought really good, and then there's things that I completely missed out on because I just didn't do that. So yeah, Russian AKs, um, do I think they're worth it for over two grand? I think yes and no, because if you're just buying it to say you have a Russian AK, then I mean, by all means go for it. Um, I can't picture them selling for less than two grand for like a traditional AK style anytime soon. And mine's not traditional, but like, you know, an AK, like an actual usable AK, not the sporter that I was talking about. I don't see them selling for less than two grand anytime soon. I'm not saying that they never will, but um, you think about it, the Chinese AKs, right? Like I was not even born yet when everyone was buying um, all the Chinese AKs for like $200, but that was a thing. People were buying Polytex, Norinkos, Clayco, stuff like that for $200 a piece. And um, they never thought at the time that those would be two, three, four thousand dollar guns, but here we are. Um, quality wise, I mean, they're nice AKs, but if you're just looking for a $3,000 AK, you could definitely buy a modern AK and spend three grand on it. So nowadays you don't buy a Chinese AK because of the performance, you buy a Chinese AK because it's a collector's item, it's rare, it's expensive. That is something I could see happening with Russian AKs because I have no idea if we'll ever import any more. All wars come to an end at some point, but that doesn't mean we're gonna just start getting Russian AKs again. Because I think that's when it stopped, is when the whole Ukraine thing happened. I think that's when we stopped getting Russian AKs. Um, it may have been before that, but that's, I don't keep track of like every like date that some world affair happens. So yeah, Russian AKs are cool. And if you, again, if you're gonna spend like 2000 to $3,000 because you want a performance AK, one thing that I could vouch for would be Arsenal. I have a few Arsenal AKs. Those skyrocket in price too, but I bought them at the time when they were sub $1,000. The Arsenal AKs are more traditional, kind of like this. Now, they're not bringing in the stamped ones anymore. And by stamped, I mean you have the rivets on the side. Um, I've never done a video on stamped versus milled, but I guess I can at some point. But the rivets on the side normally indicate stamped AKs. Uh, it's pressed metal, and then the milled AK is like machine from like one solid block. I might be butchering the description of that, but I mean, that's more or less kind of what it is. Think of like milled AKs as your billet AR-15 and stamped AKs as your forged. I think that's an okay way of describing it. Correct me if I'm wrong, but yeah, these are both stamped AKs, but this one again is more like a, a Zastava style because it is, everything is beefier on it. It's a heavier AK than the Sega. And again, this is the Vepr and, um, yeah, if you just want a performance AK, I would say Arsenal is a good one, but they no longer bring in their stamped AKs, they only do the milled, which are supposed to be the nicer ones. At the time when they were both coming in, the milled was way more expensive, the stamp was cheap, but now the roles kind of reversed. You can get a milled Arsenal for like 1500 bucks or even less if you shop around right now, when brand new, they're like two grand, but the stamped version of an Arsenal right now is like $2,000 too. So it's kind of weird how the AK market's working, but um, yeah, it's just one of those things. If you want an AK, uh, the, again, Russians are cool. You can get a sporter one for about a thousand. I don't know how much it would cost to convert. I can't imagine it being more than a thousand dollars to convert an AK, but I could be dead wrong. I've never had that type of work done. So, um, yeah, as far as what I have done to this Sega here, I bought it in this configuration for the most part, minus the aim point. Um, I put this thing on there, but this had an AR buffer tube already installed when I bought it. It's a fab defense buffer tube and it's a fab defense stock. I put this Magpul sling on here. It's got a Midwest Industries front rail with the BCM vertical grip, and then it's got nice armament rail panels on the side. And then I'm running an Aimpoint H1 on here, and it's a pretty nice gun. Now my only complaint with uh, this stock setup is every time you shoot, it presses. So it's got like a little spring in there. I don't really like that, but I mean, it works and it shoots comfortably. And then the Vepr I have over here is just a bone stock Vepr. I don't even have a muzzle device on there, but this is how I bought it. Um, What's crazy about the Vepr, um, again, I'm not complaining that I bought it at the time I did because I know I got it pretty cheap, but I had the opportunity to buy this and a 545 at the same time. They both came in at the same time. My price on either one was about 600 bucks. And the 545 had the side folding stock. And at the time, it's, uh, my price, again, was about 600 bucks a piece, but I was like, eh, I don't really need the 545 because in my head, I was like, 545 is readily available, but I don't want to buy another caliber. I already had 556 AKs and the 762. I was like, yeah, 545 will be around later on. And we also know what happened with 545. So that's another one that I missed the boat on. We used to sell the 1080 round spam cans for anywhere from 100 to 150 bucks, depending on what we were buying them for. Um, they, they were super readily available for a long time. And I mean, we would get like pallets in, of AK ammo in general. So it's kind of crazy that, you know, I missed the bandwagon on that. And those things went up crazy too, because a 545 Vepr is expensive, the Segas, I don't know, I can't think of a Sega in 545 off the top of my head, 
but even the Bulgarian Arsenal 545s, those things went insane. So, um, yeah, it's kind of crazy how everything is. Again, Russian AKs are cool. Performance-wise, I would relate it to an Arsenal. Um, I mean, this I could probably relate to a Zostava, but I don't have a modern-built Zostava, so I haven't shot one. But I have shot a lot of rounds through my Arsenal AK, and then I've shot more rounds through this one. This one, since it's kind of plain, I've only taken it out a few times, but I mean, the action on it, it feels pretty buttery. Like, there's no hang-ups. You know, there's some AKs where you can pull the charging handle back, and then you can let go and it'll be stuck. Not this one, it's, it's like butter. This one over here, I think is basically the same. Like, it's not gonna get caught. It, some of some AKs can be kind of gritty when you're racking it. Um, these are pretty sweet. One cool thing about the Sega that the Vepper does not have is you can lock your charging handle back by pressing this right here, and it kind of, it, it does lock it back. Now, there's no release other than pulling the charging handle back, but that's kind of cool that you can lock the bolt back on a uh, AK. So, this one does not have that little piece right there, but, I mean, it it's still a nice AK. So between the two shooting wise, I generally like this one more because it's lighter. I don't need this super beefy AK. This would be cool in an RPK, but yeah, this one's lighter, it's more traditional. And then you do have that bolt catch, which is sweet. So yeah, this is just kind of my thoughts on Russian AKs. Again, I think they're cool. It's, it does suck that some stuff goes up in price as far as just being able to shoot. Cause I don't even mind if the prices were lower on these and they were more available. Um, it, Cause it makes it tough to like wanna put a lot of rounds through there or modify it. Like this is worth more money in its current configuration than if I were to modify it and make it all tactical. But um, yeah, I genuinely enjoy just shooting guns too. So I don't plan on selling these anytime soon, but maybe one day we'll get some more cool AKs in, but modern AKs nowadays are pretty good. Um, if you're looking for inexpensive stuff, you do like an inexpensive, um, unfortunately that means like 700-ish dollars maybe in an AK. Uh, Palmetto AKs, I don't know what they go for off the top of my head. They seem nice for the money. Um, for about a thousand to thirteen hundred dollars, you have Zastava. I guess Kalishnikov USA is officially out of business at the moment. Who knows if that'll ever change? But if you want a high-end AK without like sourcing a Russian AK, I can honestly say that the Arsenal is pretty good. You'd be looking at the Sam Seven for a seven six two by thirty nine. That's their milled AK, and it's sweet. I have one. I haven't shot my Sam Seven yet. I have a few of the SLR one hundred seven, which is their stamp gun. That was the older gun that they brought in. But yeah, Arsenal is pretty good overall. So hopefully you guys enjoy this. Thank you guys for watching, and stay tuned for tomorrow's video.